The shower has been running for over an hour. When I find her, she is sitting cross-legged at the far end of the bathtub and without looking up, she says, the blood has finally slowed down. These were the first words she's spoken since the hospital. I'm sure she's been waiting to speak until now, at least here, with the water streaming down her face. There's no way for me to tell if she's been crying, she says. Remind me tomorrow to cancel the baby registry. What am I supposed to say? I'm supposed to be good with words, but right now, there's a bright pink river snaking its way towards the drain, and I can't get my tongue to paddle us upstream back into her womb where we left our happiness yesterday. I read the story of a 12-year-old boy, locked for two years in the bathroom, the light switch covered with duct tape to keep him from turning on the lights when they found him. He was too weak to climb out of the bathtub on his own before that. I read the story of a three-year-old child, hung upside down and beaten with a frying pan, then left to die on the floor while his parents fucked on the air mattress next to him before that. I read the story of a six-year-old girl who felt the only way to overcome the bullying was to hang herself with a jump rope. A jump rope. At what point did she feel so ignored? She felt the only way to be heard was to turn that jump rope into a cord, tie that cord around her voice, anchor it to the heavens, and play telephone with God. Sweet, sweet girl, if only my wife would have heard you. She would have answered that call. She would have shown you how to use that jump rope properly. It's why I don't tell her these stories of these children born into monsters and afraid to sleep in the dark because it would only remind her there's a nightlight we bought for the nursery that will never be used. It's even one of those nightlights that light up the ceiling with tiny stars that night we slept in each other's arms our bodies entwined into a figure eight of infinity because that's how loud we dialed up the silence and the only words of comfort i could muster was to tell her we'll just be the best aunt and uncle to everyone else's kids like this was some sort of consolation prize sometimes the math just doesn't add up on one end is a child wanting nothing more than a safe place to sleep. On the other, our parents staring at a crib they will never get to assemble. My God, do you not see this? Can you not do something to close the distance? Or at least tell me what to say to my wife to lift her up. When an empty womb feels so heavy, all she can do is collapse in the corner of our bathtub that Sunday. As I sat in church with my arms crossed, I glanced over to find her on her knees, her surrender telling me that sometimes the only way up is to hit the ground, that whispered prayers will reach heaven further than my screams and for two years she did this, not once getting loud, stacked each prayer on top of the other until it was high enough to pierce the clouds and finally he answered his cross appearing in the window of that positive pregnancy test and now I am bent over the same bathtub I found her years before giving our two-year-old son a bath he splashes water on the floor laughs when I get angry and when we finish when I tell him to put his bath toys away he kisses each one just before he drops it into the basket he knows how to love because he is loved he knows how to love because he is loved I pray every child could be as lucky